Everyone, hi. Once again, Bruce Moffson, LCSW from Sunridge of Nevada, coming to you with another video. And guess what? You guys asked for it. We're delivering. The song is called Dilly Departed by the group Rockhampton that we got from comments given by you, the listeners. All right, here we go. This song had tons of symbolism and clinical insights for me to look at. First, Dilly Departed. All right. It's a very sarcastic way to speak, if you think about it, because it goes like this. We all miss our dearly departed. Uh, our poor brother, rest in peace, who's now dearly departed. Or, the dearly departed would not be here with us today for obvious reasons. It's just a sarcastic tone to it. All right. Now, note the entrance of these five guys that came in. They're all wearing the same outfits, because why? We all suffered. No one's separate, all right? They're all grimacing, facing the camera. Once the symbol starts, it's like that, that discordant sound, you know something is going to happen, and it's going to be foreboding. Okay, now I'm going to go over the seating chart, because everyone I know has seen the video, all right? So think how the video looked with the seating chart. It looks like this, boom, boom. You got Dom on one side, Kevin on the other. Dom's on the right, Kevin's on the left, and on the sofa is Merlin, and you have Matt, and you have Joba. It's not done for no reason. There was, there was some thought behind it. Here's why. I'm going to go over each person's participation and break it down clinically, and I want to take out one or two lines that symbolize what they were feeling clinically. Here we go. Kevin, he went first. What's the point of having a best friend if you end up losing him? No lies. This second line, it was about how me and my brothers been traumatized. Okay, what is Kevin displaying? He's displaying someone who was shocked, stunned, and in disbelief over what happened. This is my best friend, and I can't believe it. Like someone saying, I can't believe he cheated on me, or he molested my daughter. Almost like a deer in headlight look. A deer in headlights look. Okay, Joba went next. I try, I try, I try. Why, why, why try? All right, self-blame. What could I have done thinking if only I did more for him? I blame myself. Example, I failed as a mother. And because of that, he joined the gang. And falling to his knees is symbolic. It's like, ugh. Oh, okay, I can't even stand. I'm so overcome with grief and emotion. He even got an emotional in the first concert post Amir. You see this all the time. He literally takes it to the heart. Okay. Matt, big dog. Okay. I feel like I don't go out, got anybody on my side no more. Then the second line I took was, stay alert, big dog. Hmm, who's referring to? Amir. Only one life is offered to you. Then he does this. He's reading off the cards, and all of a sudden he starts doing this, and he becomes self-abusive. Okay, self-loathing. I see that all the time with cutting, drug and alcohol abuse, literally hitting yourself in the face because you can't cope with what happened. Again, these two were close. This is more common than you think in a breakup this intense. Now, Merlin in the corner. And Merlin is a talker, known jokester. He's the jokester of the group. Catatonic, nothing. Okay, it's not happening. This can't be real. Trust me, I've had that in sessions where I do this, 40 minutes, like this, staring at me. No, fine, all good. It takes me like session after session to break that barrier down of like, I am in such shock over what happened, I can't get over it. That's when the people have their parents get killed in front of them. You, like this tremendous trauma. They're in a gang by, their buddy dies in their arms, shut down. Okay, Dom. Pass the weight off to your friends, this is his line, and never face the truth because you, you never learned how to be a man. I'll say that one time. What's Dom showing me? Anger, rage, violence. He stands up. He gets on top of, the, of that chair, lights a cigarette, throws the matchbook down. He's burning with anger, okay? This is the person that will be RPC'd as a kid, you know, getting kicked out of school or get arrested and go to juvie. Because he's furious at what has taken place and will cut off all ties for good. That's what he basically is saying. 
Example, common comment to me. I hate my children. I'll never see him again for what he did to my mother, for molesting my brothers. I hate him. And it's over. It's over. It's over. He cleaned out my bank account because he's a gambling addict. We're done. Now, let's go over look at the seating chart again. You know, theater of the mind. Dom here. Matt, Kevin here. Merlin, Matt, and Joba. They buttress each other. You think about how it works. You got the, the frustration and the and 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 like the the, the um, bitterness, and you got the pure anger. Those are the bookends. And in between, catatonic Merlin, the self-abusive Matt, and you have the like, why didn't I do more, Joba. In a sense, these two guys had to pick up the other three, almost like an offensive line. And and in the middle, we're going to protect our inner core. But these are all five, five, very different emotions that I see doing clinical therapy all the time. So I want everyone to kind of understand where that's coming from. Now, this is what it's like when I go into a therapy session, either in home or in an office. I like going into the home because I get to see things in a much more realistic perspective. And you have to learn to get people, let alone open up, but open up in a healthy way after what they have been through and the tra type of trauma that was done to them. So people will sometimes say like, well, it should affect everybody the same way. Wrong. It affects everyone very, very differently. And you have to learn how to adjust to that and understand five people, five people from an intense, very, very close environment and five people with very different perspectives and their lines of the song that they were singing or not singing and how they present to you physically speak volumes. You have to learn how to read that kind of stuff. And each person is very separate because everyone will have their own perspectives on how they see an accident, how they see this train wreck, what happened with Amir. They're all going to see it very, very differently. And I want to close this with a comment by Dom from an interview. He goes, I think the song is as complicated as life, if that makes sense, because it's layered and tiered. Very true. I want everyone to remember this. Life is never easy. Life is complicated. Life is messy. It's like strands of spaghetti flung together where a cake all smushed. You got to separate all the pieces. It's what you do after the mess that will define you for who you are and how you're going to go forward. Never stop moving forward. They've done that with their music. They're going forward. Are they going to be a different kind of band? Of course. But they're going forward with a new sound, a new perspective, and that's what you do in life. That's it from here. Thanks, guys.